if I can't control that thing outside of me, I might as well control how I think about it. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. In today's episode, we talk about how to change your life by changing your mind, having a deeper understanding, and taking control of your brain and your thoughts. There are some really powerful lessons in this one. Our guest today is Jacqueline Hurst. Jacqueline Hurst is the UK's leading life coach with her private practice based in London's Mayfair, welcoming a diverse and global clientele base. Alongside her successful practice, she is the number one in international bestselling author of How to Do You, and she is the founder of The Life Class, an online life coaching school where people can either learn to become a certified life coach or simply work on their self-development and mind management. Before we begin, it's almost a new year, so I wanted to make sure you know about our new 2024 Artist of Life workbook. It's a guided journal to create your most intentional and successful year next year. It's filled with 150 pages of exercises for self-discovery, self-love, goal-setting, monthly reviews, and more. It's basically a tool to take you from where you are to where you want to be. You can find it now at shop.lavendare.com. Hello, Jacqueline. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's so nice to be on. I mean, I know we were laughing and joking just now about technology. Yeah. But also, isn't it amazing that we can be sitting here, you're there and I'm here, and we can have this conversation. This is like the good, good thing about technology, right? Yes, yes. We were having technical difficulties earlier, but it is true. Like You're in London, I'm in LA, and I love that we're able to connect like this. Amazing. Amazing. There are some good things. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) So why don't you start by telling us about what you do and how you help people? How do you describe what you do? Gosh. um, So I call myself a life coach, but I always feel it's so much more than that. Um, I work with people and I teach them about how to use their mind correctly so that they learn how to feel better, um, take back better actions, get better results. So it's really about mindset. I love the idea of positive thinking. I'm not, it never really worked for me. So what I do is I teach my clients how to find the right thoughts in their mind and then everything sort of starts to change. So there's tools and techniques of actually how to change your mind. So that's one of the things I do. I work privately one-to-one with people and help them basically change their lives via how they think. Mm. I also work with corporates. I wrote a book, uh, which was an international, a number one international bestseller called How to Do You. And I have a school as well called The Life Class, uh, which runs two courses at trains people to be a life coach. And it also has a course that people can do for themselves if they want to understand themselves better. Um, It's a self-development course as well. So that's lots of things that I do. (laughs) Yeah, it is a lot. I think life coaching is such a big uh, overarching word, right? They don't exactly know what it means. But in your opinion, what do you think is the gap between self-improvement and life coaching? Because a lot of people are like, why would I need a life coach if I could just read books and do it myself. So what what is that gap? Absolutely. It's a really good question. So I think self-improvement is great. And I love, I love that, especially nowadays, we have so much information out there to help ourselves. And I think that's great. When I started in the coaching field, it was about 20 years ago, people were not necessarily talking about mental health. And when mm. I said, you know, this is what I do and I'm involved in mental health, people would look at me like I had three ears and they'd be mm-hmm. like, what? like, what is that? So the difference really is it's great that we can improve on ourselves and we can, you know, look at the quotes on Instagram and go, wow, that resonates and listen to the YouTube videos, listen to the books, the audio books, all of those things are great. And I think that is, you know, if you're self-aware enough to want to do that, that's amazing. I think coaching takes it to a more individualized level and a more personal level. So I think that life coaching can help everybody in their life, as long as they're willing and open to do the work, it can help everybody because we all have something that we feel like we can do better or situations we want to manage better or learn how to be a bit more peaceful or not be triggered by things anymore or get unstuck. I mean, the list goes on. So when we have things like that, that's a great time to bring a coach in that can help you do those changes, make those changes by teaching people how to change their mind. Mm. So what would you say are your most effective techniques that you use in your coaching? 
My most effective technique is, as I said, teaching people how their brain works. I think a lot of the time we walk around, Eileen, like really unconscious as to what we're thinking. We think we know what we're thinking. We're like, oh my God, I'm an overthinker. It's all I do all day. But actually a lot of that isn't really, you're not actually aware of it. So I think teaching people how to be conscious and awake and aware of to what they're thinking is really important. And then tools about understanding how your mind works, how thoughts create feelings. How does that work? Feelings creating actions, results. You know, a lot of the time people just want to change results. And you, you know, I don't believe one can just focus on, right, what's the, let's get this result done. Because if our mind isn't right and our brain isn't right and our thinking around that goal isn't right, we're never really going to get there. Or we might get there like sporadically, but not keep it. So what I want to do is, is, you know, teach people with those tools of exactly how it works, which unfortunately isn't something that we're taught at school. I think if we, if we were, a lot of us would be very different. Yeah. Can you go deeper into that? Like for our listeners, because if it, say they have no idea what you're talking about, how thoughts turn into actions, like run us through how the mind works and how do we actually make change? So I would say that we are constantly in situations that are out of our control. Uh, you know, the plane is delayed, the weather is awful. She said this, he did that. They said this. These are things that we cannot control. And what we usually do is we use those examples and we say, it's that that makes me angry and it's that that makes me upset. But the truth is, it isn't. What makes us upset or angry is how we're choosing to think about that situation. So learning how to actually understand, hey, hang on, if I think about that differently, I'm going to feel better is really important. So reframing things, learning to challenge our thought process is very important. I often say to my clients, Eileen, it's very much like when we drive a car. So if you're driving a car in the UK, you're driving on one side of the car, you're looking at a certain area of your wing mirror, et cetera, et cetera. But when you drive in the USA, you're driving on the opposite side. And so it takes a little bit of time for your brain to like actually get into check. Oh, hang on. I'm not in the UK anymore. I'm driving in the USA. I need to go around that side of the car instead of that side of the car. And after a while, you naturally do it. So it's a process for your brain to get there. And that's the tool that I will teach people of how to get from A to B, you know, as fast as you possibly can. All right, time for a quick break for our sponsor, Uncommon Goods. It's holiday shopping season, so if you want to find the most unique gifts this year, Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. Uncommon Goods takes the stress out of holiday shopping as they scour the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts, whether you're shopping for Secret Santa or your entire family. To give an example, here are a couple gifts I like from their site. They have a 12 days of hot sauce advent calendar. This is a cute package of 12 different hot sauces to try in 12 days this holiday season. There's also the storybook DIY kits, which are intricately detailed 3D wooden puzzles that double as reading lights. A great gift for anyone who loves unique, charming decor. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. You can be sure that the products are high quality, unique, and out of the ordinary. There's really something for everyone. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash TLL. That's uncommongoods.com slash TLL for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. There are some other things that you mentioned you talk about things like what is NLP? Can, can you explain what that is? So NLP is called Neuro Linguistic Programming. And to keep it really simple, it's ultimately the language that we use um, towards ourselves, how we speak to ourselves, the voice we use, the inner critic. And it's learning about different ways to use our brain. Our brain is so powerful. It can make us or break us. It can make us a victim. It can make us like a winner. You know, it really does depend on what we feed our brain. And considering we're the ones that are in charge of our brain, then it's really important to know that I'm going to feed my brain with the right thoughts so that I have a really great life. Yeah. So neuro-linguistic programming is a big part of understanding how am I talking to myself? What am I doing? What language am I using? Am I generalizing? Am I distorting? You know, the list goes on. I could right. talk to you about this for hours and yeah. you know, I need to like rein myself back in with this, but no, yeah, that's it's, okay. interesting. it's interesting. Let's go a little bit deeper. Like you talked about how we have so much power over our thoughts. How do you go f from what, what you said, like what you're 
brain currently is to to the ideal thoughts you want to have? Like what is that, how does that transformation look like? It's a process. And the transformation is like climbing up a mountain sometimes. I mean, I'm going to be honest, this isn't like an overnight thing. Right. But when you learn the tool and you put the tool into practice and you practice and you practice, and when you understand that, you know, when you're feeding your brain the wrong stuff, your life's not going so great, you know, and it's, and it's a much better way to think about things differently in a realistic way, right? In a way that you believe to be true. This isn't like... You know, I love the idea of mantras. Again, it never really worked for me. Me standing in front of a mirror going, I'm confident, I'm confident, when I didn't believe I was, right. you know, it was painful for me. So I had to start to find thoughts that did make me believe that. And so it's a process and a practice. And so it's like climbing up a mountain, but you do get to the top of the mountain, right? You do get there. And then you're like, wow. And that space in your head that used to be so loud and busy all the time is just very peaceful and quiet. And it's really a beautiful thing to do. And I'm a real believer of self-development, right? Like I think developing ourselves is one of the most important things we can do. You know, it's really important. Yeah, I love personal affirmation or positive affirmations. And a lot of people have that issue where like, it's hard to say something they don't believe. So you're saying to, you have to kind of like bridge the gap with saying things that you do believe, right? Just some a slight is it kind of like baby steps where it's just like something slightly more positive but still realistic and you just keep doing that yeah i really like realistic and you know i'm not saying mantras are wrong because as exactly as you've said like for some people they really work for me it didn't i really wanted to believe it but i didn't believe it so it just wouldn't work for me because i didn't believe in certain times of my life like that i was worthy of love or i was strong and independent and capable like there were times i didn't think that at all so it was very hard to to do that now there are some mantras which are really beautiful you know like you can pick things out that you look at or you read and you're like, yeah, that's a beautiful mantra. And I could start to try to believe that. And that's a really great start, you know, for people. For me, anything that works is worth it, right? Anything that works. So we're all different. So some things will work for some people and other things will work for other people. Okay. So in terms of like changing our beliefs, because I know a lot of people, they're stuck because of things like limiting beliefs. They don't believe they can do something. How do you approach that with someone? one if they're trying to like change themselves yeah it's a really good question again beliefs are basically thoughts that we've thought thousands of times and we've made to be true okay and a lot of our limiting beliefs actually are not real and so what we've done is we've made these thoughts in our brain facts and we make it a fact and then we live according to this fact which is not actually a fact right so if we are saying if we're walking around saying you know i'm not capable of doing xyz then of course you're not going to be capable of doing xyz right but when we learn that our thoughts aren't factual and in an instance like that i would say look for evidence to disprove that that's real And it's hard in the beginning because people are really stuck on like, oh, no, I just think this way. I just think this way. I just think this way. But when you actually say, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try and find some evidence to disprove that. Like, where have I been capable of doing something? It's like, you know, maybe I hold down a great job or I've got really good friendships or, you know, I've got a healthy relationship with my family or whatever. You know, those things show you are capable. So, We are very good at looking at the negative all the time until we learn to train our brain not to do that. And once we've learned how to do that, we just don't step into that negative again. Because like, why would we? Right. Do you go more into this in your book? Because your book is How to Do You, Life-Changing Art of Mastering Your Thoughts, Taking Control of Your Life. Tell us more about that. What are the main concepts in your book that you wish everyone knew about? Mainly that you can control how you manage your brain, right? Like I think people think that they can't do that. And a lot of people will say, you know, but I have anxiety. And I always say you don't have anxiety. You create anxiety for yourself. And in the beginning, that's quite contentious. People are like, what? What are you saying? But it's really important to understand that if our thoughts generate how we feel, we're creating thoughts in our brain all the time, creating that feeling. So we can create different thoughts so that we don't create that feeling. So the book was actually written in a really simplistic way. And it was simple on purpose because every time I ever picked a book up that I really wanted to read and understand, it was very detailed in things that I would get lost in like the scientific evidence of things. And I just, 
I just thought, you know, I need to put something out there that is really simple that you can just read and get it straight away. Like that you can do the worksheets in the back of each section and you can help yourself. And it, each chapter has got, you know, different things, a chapter on anxiety, a chapter on relationships, a chapter on, you know, self-worth, this kind of thing. And it's a powerful book in that way that sometimes the more simple these things are, the easier it is for us to understand for our own selves and then to sort of, you know, think, oh, okay, I can change this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a book that will, you know, and has helped people because it's, it's written in a very sort of easy, digestible way to read. Yeah. Like, let's take one of those topics, like self-worth is a big one as for me personally and for a lot of people out there. How do you change the way you think about your self-worth? You make it sound really easy, like, oh, it's all about changing how you think about something, but how does that happen? Well, practice, number one, understanding how to do it. So learning the tools is number two. Okay. But number three, I think self-worth is a really important one because I don't think that we were like, you know, born and put on this earth to like not have self-worth right and I think that when we step into things like comparison or like fear of not being good enough then we're living a very small life and self-worth is really defined and created by you and not anyone or anything outside of you so when you understand that that's a choice that you can step outside your front door not having your back or you can step outside your front door and be like you know what I'm good enough you know, I'm not like sitting on Vogue tomorrow. <laughs> like, it's okay. I'm good enough, you yeah, know. Exactly. And we start to gently take baby steps into valuing ourselves. And again, this is a process. This is not a like, here you go, you know, do this overnight and you're done. Like, it's a process to learn and believe that you are good enough and that you are valuable and you are worthy. And again, like, it's your choice to do these things, right? Like, how you choose to do that is is on you and and learning how to value yourself and learning how to sort of you know believe in your own worth is like really the most important thing you can do for yourself right because you know you can buy the handbags right and you can buy the beautiful clothes and you can buy things and you can you know do all of these things and tickle the and have the best job and da 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 and have a great home and you can have all these things outside of yourself right which is of course brings us joy and happiness that's lovely But actually, until we do that deep inner work of valuing ourselves and understanding that life is really, you know, these beautiful little things all put together and the connection and communication and this kind of stuff, then we're sort of missing out. Time for a quick break for today's sponsor, Shopify. It's workbook season at the Lavender Shop. And for the past five years, we've been proudly hosting our shop on Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business with their all-in-one e-commerce platform. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkouts up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. Through Shopify, we've been able to reach customers from all over the world. I love how easy the interface is to use and how they organize data to show you how you can grow and improve your business. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and powers millions of businesses of every size across 175 countries. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash TLL, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash TLL to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash TLL. You sound so confident in all of these um, topics and all of these, like it's, I, I want to know how you have struggled in your life to get to this point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? How did you gain all this knowledge and be like, tell us a little bit about your story that led to this. So, um, yes, I have been through it basically. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, like I mean, through it twice, what did they say? Like twice. And, you know, luckily in that age, I didn't take pictures cause we didn't have, <laughs> like that. but from the age of 15 to 25, I was, you know, um, addicted to class A drugs. I was into alcohol. I was into anything I could do that was like addictive, take, you know, I was anorexic. I had suffered with depression and anxiety and all of these things. And at 25, I got clean, I got sober and I recovered fully from anorexia. And I delved into deep, deep, deep inner work. And I had to learn for myself how to become a peaceful person. Like I put all these things down. I was a mess, you know, I was a total mess. But I realized like I hadn't got clean and sober, 
you know, to spend my life miserable or, or call myself, you know, or label myself things that I should live up to these small labels. Like I wanted much more than that. Mentally, I wanted peace. So I did a lot of work. You know, I studied a lot um, around the world. I took courses. I, you know, did every kind of therapy that you could imagine. You know, I did so much work on myself that I, you know, realized that I'd been to the extreme on so many levels for a reason. And that reason was to give back and to share. This is how we do that, right? When we're in pain or we're unhappy or we're stressed or we're sad or frustrated or anxious or, you know, hurting ourselves, there is a way out. And I think that's really important for people to know. So I've definitely, you know, seen the darkness back in the day many times over. And, you know, my mission was to learn how to live a calm and peaceful life and not be triggered by things anymore. Yeah. And do you feel like you're there now? Or how far in your journey are you with that? <laughs> the peace? <laughs> right. It's such a great question. But it, the thing is, I don't think we, I mean, I definitely think when it comes to inner peace, I would tell you that like, I'm pretty much there. But what I know is that this is a never ending journey and there's always more to learn. And actually, the more I learn, the less I know, you know, like there's a constant learning and it's exciting as well. But I don't think we ever get there. You know, right. I definitely could look back and say, for me, like person A and person B, like if you interviewed me then and you interviewed me now, you'd be like, wait, this is two totally different people, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I definitely think that, you know, I think that journey of inner sort of growth and evolution and elevation is never ending. Once you start, it's, it's sort of, it's in, it's inside you. Yeah. But you've definitely had a big transformation. I feel like from now onwards, it's just like little tweaks and little improvements, right? Like, does it get easier for, for the people who are struggling? Does it get easier? Thousand percent. <laughs> That's I good to know. It gets easier. And, and it's also worth it, right? Like it's really, you know, I remember my first year of being clean and I just remember like literally being on my knees and I just, you know, it was a mess. And, and I look back on that and I think, how on earth did I get through that first year? Like how, I still don't know how I did it, you know? Mm -hmm. But what I do know is looking back, I look at it and I think I am so glad that I held on and I'm so glad that I did the work. And that's why I'm so passionate about doing this for people. Cause when I get to see them sort of, you know, from the beginning where they're stressed or they're anxious or they, you know, they're unhappy or they're stuck on things. And then I get to see them really like radically change and be peaceful and things that happen that used to wind them up is now like, Oh, I wasn't even affected by it. Like that just makes me happy. Yeah. To see people heal. That's amazing. Yeah, to see people heal. It's a gift actually. It's a real gift. Yeah. yeah. You talked about how it, it's difficult going through that and pushing yourself through that. A lot of people tend to give up and they go, they're always on this, like trying a little bit and then giving up, trying a little bit, giving up kind of phase where it's like a cycle they stay in. What are your tips on actually staying like committed and consistent to, to your growth and your healing instead of just like giving up easily? I think two things, although it's sort of probably one. So I would say that it's one day at a time. You know, in recovery, I remember that they used to say just for today. And I think that that just for today, you know, got me like whatever I am, 20 years clean and sober. Like it's just keeping it in the day. And I think if anyone said to me, like, you can't do that thing ever again for the rest of your life, I would be running to go and get that thing. <laughs> Right? right. But if I just can't do it just for today, like I can get to bed and not do that thing for a day, or I can get to bed and, you know, achieve that one goal that I set myself out for just for today. Right. Like, so if you break it down into baby steps and also remember that there is no such thing as perfection. And actually the most important thing really, I would say is that we're trying as long as we're trying, it's, it's good enough. And, you know, timing is important too. You know, when your time is right, your time is right and you'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Just for today. I love it. Yeah. Okay. And then I also want to learn about like your, your mindset and your habits now, like what are the key foundational things that you always practice? What I, I, if you were to like describe your mindset, you know, mindset and habits. One of the most important things I do every day is get out into nature. And I think that's really important for me. It's a really, it's nature for me is very healing. 
Animals for me are very healing. I love horse riding. I have a dog that you heard barking before and she's being a really good girl and not barking through this um, (laughs) podcast, which is really good. So I think nature, animals, really important. Communication, really important. Having good people around you that get you is like so underrated. Like having good people around you that get you are really, really important. You know, the peace around you is like key. My mindset is very, very strong. I'm a real believer of like, you can do and be and have whatever you want. And I also understand that life is not always easy, right? Like, and it's not always fair and things go on that, you know, can be a lot sometimes. But what I know is, again, like I, you know, how I said when I started, if I can't control that thing outside of me, I might as well control how I think about it. And I don't want to spend, you know, my time wound up and upset and angry and frustrated over things I can't control. So I really like humor. It's a really big one for me of like, how can I find a humorous way of thinking about this thing? And also, you know, things always work out, you know, things always work out and it's the brain that needs to calm down and, you know, stop catastrophizing and analyzing. So I feel grateful for like not having all of that go on. Like I, I just believe things are going to work out and it's just going to be what it's going to be. And it's all going to be okay. Yeah. All right, let's take a break for our sponsor, Factor. This time of year gets busier for everyone. If you're short on time and already overwhelmed with what's on your plate, consider trying a meal kit service like Factor. Factor is America's top ready to eat meal kit with chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your doorstep. With Factor, you'll save precious time, nourish your body, and stay right on track with your healthy lifestyle. Factor saves me so much time and effort on food prep. I love that the meals taste good and introduce variety to my everyday meals. Even better that their meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. You can choose from over 34 weekly flavor packed meals, each with around or fewer than 550 calories per serving. You can also complement your meals with add ons like snacks or cold pressed juices and smoothies. Head to factormeals.com slash TLL50 and use the code TLL50 to get 50% off. That's code TLL50 at factormeals.com slash TLL50 to get 50% off. Let's get into that a little more because I know a lot of people, myself too, have like anxiety about the future, right? Like you want to be able to control it and make sure it goes well, but it, you obviously don't have that control. And it, people either worry about the future or, you know, they're just unsettled. So how, what are your tips or what advice do you have for like having that mindset of, I trust everything is going to be okay? I think that you do have to have faith that things are working how they're meant to be working, which does not mean sit on your ass and do nothing, right? It doesn't mean like, oh, I'm just going to sit here and the world is going to work for me. Like, no, you have to put the work in to make it work. But also, you know, if you didn't get the job, it's because that job wasn't meant for you and something bad is coming along. And if you didn't get the house you really wanted to rent or buy, it's because that isn't for you and something's better is coming along. So if you can believe in that, that you do the work to get where you want to go, but also do it in a way where you surrender the outcome of that and you let it be what it's going to be, you're going to live a much more peaceful life because it is always working. I think if your listeners stopped for one minute and was like, okay, is there any time in my life where I was really upset about something? Like really, really, really upset about something. And I could look back now and go, ah, oh, maybe that happened because that next thing that happened was way better than that thing I was crying about. And I'm sure that we could all find situations like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. As to always know that there's something better coming. I really believe that. I really believe that to be true. Yeah. What are your thoughts on manifestation? Because what you talk about sounds like manifesting, but it's not exactly like, I don't think I've seen that around your brand or your teachings or, you know, all of this stuff seems like it overlaps, but what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think it overlaps for sure. And I do believe in manifestation. I really do. And there's definitely things in my life, you know, which always puts like a shiver up my spine, but like Mm -hmm. there's definitely things in my life that I absolutely have manifested and absolutely have come true. They were big things. They weren't small things. So I am a believer of like visualization and putting all that into practice and that your thoughts are energy and, you know, what we put out comes back. Like I'm a real believer of that, which is why you've got to be so careful about your thinking, right? Yep. Right. So manifesting is a really, is a really big one, but again, like not to an extent that you're like upset with yourself for not doing it, like doing it really gently and kindly. I think 
that's another thing. Like, you know, we are not taught, especially as women, to be kind and gentle to ourselves. And I think that's also another practice of like, you know, if you didn't manifest that thing for today, but you will do it tomorrow, like that's okay. (laughs) It's okay. You know? Right. Just generally being more open and trusting, like not being so forceful with anything. Right. You know, they say it's the art of surrender and surrender is an art. It really is, especially for people like you and I, right? That like, <laughs> just do things. you know, I do, I do understand. And it's such a, you know, life is such a game of sort of making it happen versus letting it happen and learning how to do those, you know, which one is really important to learn. You know, it's a learning. Yeah. No, I, I love that that quote about like making it happen versus letting it happen. It's a yeah. dance, right? Yeah. It really is. It really is. Yeah, it really is. I think that's important. But I think doing the work is key. Doing the work helps you understand that more and more and more. You also help a lot of people who are struggling with their body image as a weight coach. And since it's a common insecurity, let's get into that as well. Like, how do you approach this with your clients, people who are struggling with body image and being confident in ourselves and our bodies? Yeah, I think also like in this day and age, we are very lucky. Like when I started this again, like back in the day, you know, we only ever had the supermodels on Vogue and that was like it. And that was, you know, the brainwashing of like, you have to be a size double zero to be of worth and beautiful. And I think today in 2023, we are given many more like visuals of what beauty can be, which I think is so amazing, you know. And we have people that are showing us, you know, more people that look like us today, which I think is great. And we've got a huge body positivity movement, which I also think is great. I think when it comes to body image, one of the main things to talk about is the brainwashing. And I think the brainwashing is key because we do live in this society that, you know, lies to us and, and, and you know, says... Uh, sort of unconsciously, you know, um, subliminally that, you know, if you're not this look, then you're not good enough. But I think that it's the unpacking of that brainwashing and asking ourselves, well, who's telling us that? And where, who's taught me that? And what have I learned from that person? And, you know, it's been passed down. So we have to become adults and say, actually, I don't, I'm not sure that really works for me just because society says I need to be this thing and I'm not that thing. Um, what am I going to do? Spend my life unhappy about that or just embrace who I am? So there's a lot of unpacking with the brainwashing and there's a lot of unpacking with diet mentality, which is, you know, diets don't work. We know that. And it's a huge, you know, problem. Um, And so learning how to unpack and, and run away from any form of diet mentality is really important. And learning to sort of find acceptance around your body is the first space, you know, accepting it is step one. And then in terms of like confidence, like the next steps after acceptance, how do we like then get confident about ourselves and our bodies and our worth? Well, first of all, if you are project yourself, you know, 10 years from now and you look at a picture of yourself today, you're going to be like, oh my God, I was hot, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start there, right? Uh-huh. Because we're all getting older, we're all growing up. And I think that's really important. I think second of all, like, and I say this to people all the time. Um, no one else cares about your ass. Like nobody, <laughs> nobody cares about that. Right. Mm-hmm. And we are also like self obsessed with, Oh my God, does this look right at this thing? But no one is actually looking like, it's just not that important for anyone else. And that's also like a, Oh, drop your shoulders moment. Like, Whoa, do you mean I'm walking down the street and not everyone is staring at my ass? Like, Whoa, is that possible? But it's true. So I think that's also important to sort of step away from us thinking that we're the most important thing when we walk down the street, you know, because we're not. And people are so, you know, focused on their own selves, they're not focused on us. And the other thing to say is that, again, really life is way too short for this kind of thinking. You know, like none of us know how long we've got. And I'm sure on all of our deathbeds, none of us are going to go, oh, my God, I'm so glad I spent all that time worrying about my weight. Like, I just don't think anyone's going to say that. They're going to be like, I wish I'd cared less. So you've only got one life, right? None of us, we're all going the same way. None of us get out alive, right? And none of us know how long we've got. So we might as well enjoy our lives and enjoy our bodies and be gracious for that. Because the truth is, and I say this as well, like your body is the least interesting part about you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I also wouldn't want to be around people that only thought my body was the most interesting part about me. Like that would not be good. So Exactly. 
Right. Like your friends and the people that are around you, like they couldn't care less. They, they love you because of your mind, because of your, you know, attitude, because of your compassion or your kindness or whatever it is. It's not, oh, because she's the size of this. Like no one cares. Yeah. Oh my God. So right. And then you just brought to me this idea of how much time and energy we waste on thinking about our weight, especially women. (laughs) If you thought of all the time and energy you spent worrying about your body or your weight, if you put that time and energy to something else, something more positive, productive, maybe you like learn a new language or learn, practice cooking something new, like literally anything else would be better use of your time and energy and your focus. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And there are books that will explain exactly that to you. You know, um, there's some great books out there, especially by like Janine Roth and, you know, uh, Jane Hirschman. I can't remember the other lady called When Women Stop Hating Their Bodies. And a lot of it is very much about, you know, sort of the old school patriarchal society, like teaching women that if you just focus on your calories, you know, we'll do the big stuff, we'll be in the government, and we'll be in science, and you just focus on, you know, that. And when you start to learn about all of that, that's also enough to make you angry to be like, you know, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, forget (laughs) it. Ask me a donut, you know, like, no. (laughs) So yeah, there's all of that. There's so much that, um, you know, I will teach my clients because it's important work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Love it. Yeah. Okay. And then... (laughs) Moving on, I want to know about your daily, weekly routine. Like, how do you take care of yourself? Are there any like practices, tools that you use? Yeah. So um, for me, I am really careful about my brain and what goes into it. Ooh, let's talk about that. Yeah. Like I really, and again, I learned that through one of my um, courses back in the day about, you know, you've really got to be careful what goes in. So I would not listen to like the news 24 seven, you know, and the negativity, like I don't want to do that to my brain. So I'm very, very careful and very boundaried about that. And if I'm like working with clients all day, I will not be going out for dinners in the evening because my brain can't take too much, right? Like I really take care of it. Like people probably do in the gym when they go to the gym and they take care of their bodies and they have a rest day and this and that, that's what I do for my brain. So that's like number one nature is very important. Every day I do a walk. That's really important with my dog. Um, and I also, um, am into Pilates. I like that very much because it's quite meditative. You know, I do it quite slowly and the breath and all of that, like it's really important. And that's very important. And I drink my two liters every day of water. I think that's also really important for like, you know, body moving. Um, and so, yeah, those are sort of things that I absolutely do. And I think also, you know, meditation is important. I'm not great at it, but I try and do every night before I go to bed. I either try and do a meditation or I listen to some stuff from like Wayne Dyer or something like that or Abraham Hicks, just so I can go to sleep with the right stuff in my subconscious. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So you're all about protecting your brain and nurturing it with only what's best for it. Not like falling into like spirals of negative thinking or even like the internet or news. I think it's really detrimental. And I think, you know, we, you know, this whole thing with social media like blew up and suddenly we had social media, but there's no control around it, right? So if no one else is controlling it, I need to love myself enough to control that because I don't want to spend four hours, you know, going through TikTok. Like I just don't want to do that, you know? <laughs> I think we all can agree on that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So do you have any like practical exercises that you can leave our listeners with today? Something that they can do like today, a- anything to like help their brain? I have got one thing that I would say to your listeners. And I think if there's anything that they're struggling with, I would want them to ask themselves one question. And the question would be, how can I think about this differently? And it's such a powerful question because it literally stops the negative thinking in its track. Like, oh, second of all, it shows us that we have a choice. And third of all, we're starting to work the other muscle of like, oh, how can I think about this differently in a way that I could feel a bit better? Now, it doesn't mean you have to go from like, you know, A to Z. But even if you just inch into a thought that feels a bit better, then you've done an amazing job. So that's what I would say. How can I think about this differently? That's the question of the day. (laughs) 
Love it. It's simple, but I can see how it literally, like if you do that every day or every moment you get triggered, it's, it's such a big shift. It's such a big shift. And like, you know, we are in control of that, right? Like that's totally within our control to do. Amazing. Okay, Jacqueline, do you have any final messages that you want to leave the audience with today? Well, first of all, thank you for listening. Um, That's really kind. And second of all, just to say that you are more powerful than you think you are. And you're probably more beautiful than you think you are. And you're definitely more worthy than you think you are. And you're more amazing than you think you are. And if you can give yourself the love that you're giving to other people, and you can turn that back in because you deserve it, you will start to see how your life changes and you're worth doing that. So beautiful. All right, Jacqueline, where can we find you online? So you can find me at uh, uh, com is my main website. You can find me on Instagram, which is a fun handle. It's Jacqueline underscore Hurst underscore. And you can find my school at thelifeclass.com. And you can find my book on Amazon. Um, and it's called How to Do You. Amazing. We'll have all those links in the show notes so you guys can check her out. Thank you so much for today. You have so much like knowledge and wisdom to share, but I'm excited for our listeners to start changing their mind with just that simple question and with everything else you went over today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, it's been an absolute honor. So thank you so much. 